BBC Broadcasting House. Uh, that was the new bit, the glassy bit, the older bit. It's behind me here. Uh, it's built in the 1930s, very similar to MI5. And uh, it's in that sort of like rubbishy, kind of plain Art Deco style, but they have a, uh, a statue on the front. Now, I watched uh, a video not too long ago, somebody sent it to me about uh, Eric Gill, the sculptor, and the statue that is on the front of this building, although the video that I watched said it was on the front of the Bush House, which is down in Aldwych, near Fleet Street. Uh, so I, I was compelled to make a video just to let you know that it isn't down there, it's up here, the top of Regent Street, next to All Souls Church. We must have all of your souls. And uh, it's that statue there. Now the statue was uh, again produced in the 1930s. It is of Prospero and Ariel. Now, these are characters from uh, Shakespeare's play, The Tempest. Uh, this is quite a controversial statue because, of course, uh, this gentleman here with his uh, kind of gleeful oriental look uh, is sort of, you know, holding quite tenderly a small boy. Okay, that's just outside the BBC in London there. Basically a pedophile statue and uh, now we get some news report about a Christian uh, yesterday who's been dismissed from her position as a nurse and let's see what happens. A nurse sacked for gross misconduct after patients complained she had preached Christianity at them has taken her case to a tribunal today. Sarah Kute was dismissed after two warnings about what managers at Dartford's Darren Valley Hospital called inappropriate behaviour. Now I'm not sure if the BBC recently reported on the Muslims in London challenging the Queen to either convert to Islam uh, or be beheaded. I'm not sure if the BBC reported on that, but you're getting uh, Muslim or Islamic patrols in London going around basically physically assaulting people. It's not been reported, but you're getting a woman who's actually a professional, who's helping people, uh, also encouraging them to pray. And uh, this is front page news. This is like terrorism. This is worse than terrorism. You see where this is going. You see the depth of depravity that this nation is in just now. In one complaint, a patient said she implied he'd only be cured if he believed in God. But Mrs. Kute said she'd only talked about her religion to comfort those preparing for surgery. And, and probably she's been misquoted. I mean, she may have been misquoted. And this is why, you know, uh, if you're a street preacher or if you're representing God, it's always good to, to make a recording of your conversation so that uh, these Satanists at the BBC can't misreport. Um, events, you see. Sarah Smith reports. Sarah Kute's job included filling out pre-operation questionnaires with patients at Darren Valley Hospital. But when it came to asking if they had a religion to ensure any religious requirements were understood prior to surgery, it didn't end with a simple tick in the box. She admits engaging people in conversation. Engaging people in conversation? Off with her head invent a new bylaw for that, that you can't speak to people, yeah? I mean, what law has she actually broken? What law has she actually broken? She's been dismissed from her job, she's not broken any laws, and yet uh, nothing, no, no law, nothing has been established against this woman that she's done anything wrong. She's, she's not guilty of wrongdoing, and yet she's still dismissed from her job while people run free, raping, pillaging, murdering, and that doesn't get reported. The hospital trust said her manner was inappropriate. She yeah. doesn't agree. I bet it was. Where do you draw the line? Terrible. Where do you now say to the patient, Terrible. oh, 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 you've got to stop that. Let wow. me find out if we should talk about this religion bit. And then who talks to them? At what stage do you carry on talking to the patient? And at what stage do you say, oh, no, 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 we shouldn't go there now. So th 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 there's a line. That is not quite distinct yet. Well, let's just examine what the 
the line in the BBC find appropriate, yeah? Or inappropriate, shall we? We'll, we'll find out where that line exactly is according to them. Investigators say a now deceased BBC television presenter might have sexually abused dead bodies in a hospital. Jimmy Savile. Inquiries were conducted at healthcare facilities across the UK. Savile had unsupervised access to multiple hospitals as a celebrity fundraiser. So there we go. According to the BBC, it's all right to rape children and uh, go in and rape dead bodies. According to them, that's the line that they've drawn in the sand, yeah? An unbroadcast section of a BBC radio interview you did in 1978, recently came to light, included on a, a pill album, and you were talking about making a film where you kill famous people. Now, it's never been played on television before, but it has a particular uh, relevance. Let's listen to this. So who else is on the goner list? Oh, it's endless, believe me. I just want to make a film of it. On film, I'd like to kill Jimmy Savile. I think he's a hypocrite. Weren't I right? I bet he's into all kinds of seediness that we all know about, but not allowed to talk about. Most kids wanted to go to the top of the pops, but we all knew what that cigar muncher was up to. But I okay, so what you've got here is one of the celebrities, um, Johnny Rotten from the Sex Pistols, um, openly speaking against what Jimmy Savile was involved with and he said that uh, most people knew about what he was up to and then he goes on to say but weren't allowed to actually speak about weren't allowed to speak about so why weren't they allowed and he says there's more involved as well more people involved in this and so it just seems that there's people at the BBC that uh, know about this and uh, instead of actually reporting it, they've, they've kept silent to it, which I think is a form of, uh, you know, being part of raping and killing. If you actually know something about it and you don't speak out against it. You know, Johnny Rotten was one of the few people that spoke out against it. But I'm very, very bitter that the likes of Savile and the rest of them were allowed to continue. And the rest of them? Did you ever try and do anything about Savile? I did my bit. I said what I had to. Did they air that? No. It just got suppressed. Yeah. For, for legal reasons. Yeah. I did found myself. Mean... I found myself being banned from BBC Radio there for quite a while for my contentious behaviour. It just seems that if if anyone's been banned from the BBC, that they're actually they've got some sort of level of morals. Um, and I think that the BBC should there should be a national investigation. Um, into the BBC um, made right now just like the there there should be an investigation against Pizzagate in America there should be a, a major investigation against uh, the British Beelzebub broad Broadcasting Company they're just a regular Muslim Islamic patrol there in London probably and just uh, Grabbing a passerby, just a woman passing by and then dragging her away and probably, probably raping her, we don't know what happened. Actually dragging her by the hair, just, there you go, awesome. Islamic patrol, wonderful. And uh, we obviously know that assault is wrong and all of that, but, you know. Oh, I'm trying to say, there you go, she's not a Muslim, she's not wearing a hijab, there you go, that's what happens to women that don't wear hijabs in a Muslim area, there you are. Wonderful. That's it. Now, that statue was produced by Eric Gill. And uh, it's not difficult to find out about Eric Gill, the fact that uh, he was a very, very, very su successful... Yeah, I think you were right there the first time, brother, saying he was sick. It is actually breaking the second commandment as well. You know, that's just what it says in the Bible. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people or any nation. And so, the UK used to be a well-respected nation, morally. 
um, but now it's becoming extremely tolerant of sin and it's becoming intolerant of righteousness people actually helping others uh, offering to pray for them uh, yes even preaching preaching isn't uh, you know isn't against the law yet but there we see a woman losing her job for telling someone that it's good to pray it's actually good to pray well maybe these people will find God in another way but they certainly won't uh, find the one true God through his son Jesus Christ if they're actually stopping people um, preaching the good news of Jesus Christ as this 16 year old walks to the station the man behind her is about to do something unprovoked and unfit for tea time viewing he punches her so hard that by the time she hits the pavement she is already unconscious allowing her attacker to escape um, oh, not anybody taking any risks? Talking about Jimmy Savile. I think the growth, really. I don't think, I'd certainly never heard any, anything about that. I mean, the most awful aspect, which is the idea of molesting kids in the hospital. I mean, that is just unbelievable. You know, sort of bribing his way out of it by giving me a bounce to the hospital. I mean, so that, that is staggering. A Christian nurse sacked by the NHS after offering to pray for patients is claiming she was unfairly dismissed. Sarah Coote was dismissed from Darren Valley Hospital in Dartford for what was described as gross misconduct. But one complaint from a cancer patient claimed that the nurse had told him he would have a better chance of survival if he prayed. Sarah Smith reports. Disgusting. Sarah Coutte's job included filling out pre-operation questionnaires with patients at Darren Valley Hospital. But when it came to asking if they had a religion to ensure any religious requirements were understood prior to surgery, it didn't end with a simple tick in the box. She admits engaging people in conversation. The hospital trust said her manner was inappropriate. She doesn't agree. Where do you draw the line? Where? Yeah, where do you draw the line? You know? Okay, now this fat waste of space, um, as far as I know, hasn't been speaking against uh, the rapes, uh, the bullying, even the murders, um, and endless things that's been going on in British society, mostly through uh, the Muslims who's been coming in <clears throat> to the nation. Okay, now I've, I've, uh, I'm quite liberal in the fact that. Um, people have got a right to believe what they want but this fat waste of space here okay is sitting here wasting people's time and money right while people are running free raping pillaging and murdering okay and this fat idiot thinks he's going to bully a woman who's only trying to help people trying to pray for people okay not broken any laws but in this fat idiot's uh, view, point of view, that she's a criminal now, that she's she's worthy of losing her entire career, right? According to this fat fucking idiot. Totally inappropriate to be, when someone's about to go into surgery, when someone is receiving care, for someone to use that as an opportunity to push their personal religious beliefs. In any job where I've worked with vulnerable children or adults, I would rightly expect... What do you mean, like Jimmy Savile? Working with vulnerable children and adults, you fat... ...be fired for that sort of misconduct. But Mrs Coutte said she was offering comfort and usually only brought up her Christianity if the patient had initiated the conversation. This is a fundamental question about freedom. Freedom for people like Sarah Coutte to go to work, to be a nurse uh, in, the, in the workplace and to speak about their faith naturally. Mrs Coutte is claiming unfair dismissal and seeking reinstatement and yeah, no compensation. Right, the right, tribunal judge right. will give his decision in the yeah. coming days. Hope he's not a pedophile. He was uh, apparently a uh, 
sexual madman. And uh, well, apparently when he used to create his sculptures, uh, the big sort of monumental statues, he used to stand up on a scaffold wearing a robe, like a, like a habit. And uh, full in the knowledge that people could look up at him and see his tackle. So uh, this was a guy who was very interested in uh, all things sexual. There is apparently on the back of that statue uh, behind me a, a relief of a young, a beautiful young girl. Nobody really knows who it is, but obviously it's meaningful for him uh, because it's hidden behind that statue. Now there have been very, there have been a few uh, calls for the BBC to uh, remove that statue, especially by uh, sort of child protection charities and stuff like that. But uh, the BBC have denied. They said, they said, no, we're going to keep it. Um, Eric Gill did. I, I know what I would do with them. Well, I'm still here, and the rest of them, what, what are still alive, nice bit of jail time for them. Jail time. <laughs> jail time for them. Jail time. Jail time for them. Jail time.